In this episode of Financial Model Detective, I want to show you how to detect hard-coded inputs within formulas in your spreadsheets. Okay, so I received an email from Carlos, who is reading my book, The Financial Model Detective. He mentioned that the method inquired to detect hard-coded inputs is no longer available within Microsoft 365, so I suggested him some other methods. So before we get into that, the first thing that I want to just talk to you about is why do we think that having uh, hard-coded inputs within formula is a problem? Okay, so I am referring to my blog post on the same topic that I'm going to post it on my website. So the reason why we say do not hard code within formula is first of all for transparency. If it's a spreadsheet that you are using for yourself, it's just for budgeting or something that you're going to just use it once to get a figure and then, you know, you don't need it anymore. You don't need to refer to it anymore. You don't need to send it to someone else then you might want to just do, you know, your dirty, you know, quick and dirty calculation. If, however, we are talking about the proper financial model, a tool that you are sending to other people, a tool that you are using, and you're going to keep on using it through time, then for that, you need to be transparent, meaning that all the input that goes into the model, you need to separate them and put them separately in a section of your financial model so that anyone opening the model knows that, okay, these are the inputs and these are the outputs. And and these are the calculations and anything calculations should not contain any hard coding within the formula you know so it's just like it's hiding it's just like you're just you know hiding something within there so that's something that you should not do so first thing is for transparency and second is for flexibility if you hard code an input within the formula if you're asked to change then you know you need to go back into that formula and change it manually and then drag the formula across instead you can just put the input separately and then change the input and the whole thing is going to automatically get updated without the need to go into the formulas okay so these are the reason why it is not recommended to hard code within formulas okay so now if let's say that you are reviewing someone else's financial model and these are one of the things in your checklist that you want to check okay that mechanically this is something that you need to check in the first checklist that you have i actually i'm going to put, uh, also put a link to the other uh, tutorials and templates that i have regarding how to do a quick review of a financial model and one of the things that you need to check is this you know hard coding within formulas okay so that's a bit tricky but let's go and see what are the things that i suggested to carlos okay so the first thing that i suggested to carlos was to do a bird view and detect inputs by just activating the show formula within excel okay so for the bird view method you come to formulas under the formula tab you say show formulas okay so now you see that it's going to look like this then you need to go and you know okay let me just come out you actually see just uh, you just see the the formulas right and then you know by looking at the formula you might want to come and see okay whether you can see any number within this formula so up to now i don't see okay so i see some you know hard-coded formulas here so i'm gonna just highlight them in red or something flashy so that i know that this is containing hard-coded uh, numbers and i'm gonna come to my worksheet and put a reference to these uh, hard-coded figures and tell the financial modeler that these are hard coded sorry i so this is just just wanted to put not the figures okay so these are hard coded and i'm going to explain you know i'm just not going to waste your time but i'm going to explain you know in my method of how to communicate with the financial modeler how to efficiently do a q a session on the model when you're commenting it's good to raise the issue mention why you think it's a problem and then suggest a solution so we're going to do all of these three steps we're going to say we have found hard-coded uh, inputs within the formula we think that this is not good because it's against transparency and flexibility 
then later we want to change things and it's not going to be it's going to be difficult so we're going to mention all these things that it's just you know problematic with hard coding and then we're going to say for these purposes we would appreciate if you could separate these inputs and put them in your input sheet okay so we're going to draft all of this after but we're just going to note it when we are reviewing so as you have seen this is the bird view of course if you have like you know limited data but if you have all this data with all these columns and sometimes the number of rows we believe me i have seen even recently models with like thousands of rows of data so you will see that it's kind of difficult with the bird view uh, and uh, so that's what i uh, that's the thing that i suggested the first method that i suggested to carlo was the bird view the other one that i suggested i said if the bird view is too much then what i suggest you to do is to do a bird view on the first column okay so what we're going to do here is for the acid test is to come and do the, the formula on the first column okay and then check if the formula just just we're just going to check this column okay so we see that there are there seems to be no hard coding with this one we, we are not going to care about the other ones okay and then we're going to just go back to our normal view but this time we're going to do what danny from f uh, from grid lines called the acid test and he has an article about it that I'm going to put the link down below for you so what he's suggesting for the acid test most of the time the acid test what Danny is suggesting is to uh, use the acid test for detecting inconsistency within formulas in a row okay but we're going to just do now we're going to just kill uh, you know two birds with one shot i don't like the expression but that's what we're going to do we're going to do the formula inconsistency and also hard coding together in this um, with this acid test so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to maybe bring one metric which is very sensitive it's just the line last line item in a cash flow waterfall and that's the equity irr right so i'm going to bring my equity irr in the base case in the case that i have now before the audit I'm going to put it here and um, so as you can see it was 14 and we're going to just copy and paste it maybe here as a starting point okay this one okay and I'm going to get the difference and I'm going to see if the difference is changing when I am changing because if I copy the formula across you know from here even let's say to here because of the formula consistency law and not hard coding within formulas nothing should change in the model I should be able to copy and paste it across and nothing should happen to the model okay but as you can see here there is a, there is a change in the IRR and that is because when we copied the the formula across there were some hard coded figures within the formula that changed the whole story okay so if we go back we're going to see that we're going to see those hard coded figures you see these were the hard coded figures so when we copy this across this whole thing changed right so we are not going to do it so we're going to leave it here all right so that's the combination of acid test and bird view and uh, however our friend carlos mentioned to me that okay and the last one that i suggested to carlos is a vba method that i'm going to explain in a in a little while so our friend carlos you know he thanked me of course he's very kind he thanked me for the email and for the, for what i suggested however he thinks that the bird view and the second method acid test is not really practical and i give him full credit for that and he said that he's not very comfortable with the vba and so that's why I made this video and I have another video where I explain how you can easily copy any code, VBA code from internet, from other sources and paste it into your own spreadsheet and use it. You don't need to be a VBA coder. You don't need to know the VBA language. You just need to copy and paste it into your model. You just need to have the developer tab and just copy and paste it in uh, your workbook as a new module. And I explained all that in another 
another video and I have another video where I explain to you about the standards when it comes to a visual basic and one of the rules that I have is to always mention the reference where you get your codes from okay so I'm going to put the links to all these videos as well you can go and check them out after this video but now what I want to show you is how to detect hard-coded inputs using a very simple VBA code. And this is not from me, I'm gonna tell you the source right now. So the, say, the first thing that I suggest on my blog is to save your file under another name. Anytime when you're auditing, you know, you're reviewing, make sure that you're gonna, you're gonna put, you know, different colors, you're gonna put some comments and everything. So always save your file under another name. And after you have done that, the next thing that you want to do is to um, make sure that you have the developer tab open. If you don't have it, it's very you know easy. You just go to options and under options, you have ribbon, customized ribbon, and this one should be ticked. Okay, and then you have access to the whole magic of VBA. All right, so once you have that, you come in your developer tab and you can either do Alt F11. Sorry, let me just put mine in French. It's in French. I'm going to put it in English. Okay. I'm going to put Alt F11 and it's going to open. Now we are in the VBA world. Okay. So, or if you don't want to do that, you're just going to come to the developer tab and Visual Basic. Okay. So now you see uh, this is the worksheet that I'm working on Phoenix Mode Finding R Coded. These are the worksheets that are included in this. Um, in this uh, workbook and these are the modules so I already have a macro here which is a copy and paste for making scenario analysis so what I'm going to do I'm going to insert another module okay for now that's the one that I'm going to put the user defined function then I'm going to come to my code and the code I got it from let me tell you I got it from get digital slash help dot com and uh, yeah, so I'm going to put the reference and everything here. So the code is from them. So what you're going to do is that you're going to just copy the code from here, copy to clipboard, and then you come and you paste it here. Okay. And then if you want, you can even change the name here, put, put a name for it. I don't know. You want to put a name, just hard coded, hard coded detector, something like that detector. Okay. Something like that. Now this is it function you created a function okay you didn't create you know these guys they created the function now you have a function which is included like a max min sum all this kind of function this is another function that they created so next step is to come to your sheet that worksheet for example here i want to automatically detect the hard-coded figures so now this is their method. What I love about it is a combination of VBA, user defined function and the conditional formatting under Excel. So you're going to come and you select the whole worksheet. Okay. The whole worksheet. Then you come to your home tab, condition of formatting, and you're going to say new rule. Okay. And then use formula. Oops, sorry. I forgot to copy the Okay, I got excited, I forgot. So this is the one I, we want. This is the U cell uses literal value. Okay, so that's the um, user defined function. We need to copy it. So let's go back, sorry about that. So we're gonna come to home page, conditional formatting, a new rule, and under new rule, we're gonna say use formula. And here we're gonna type or paste because I don't have a good memory. So I'm gonna paste it here and I'm going to put A1. So this is the user defined function and this is the uh, cell address A1 and it's going to do it because we selected the whole workbook It's going to do it and check it for all the cells within this workbook. And then in terms of a formatting, I'm going to put something flashy like red. Okay. So that it detects once, you know, it's, it detects any hard coded, whether it's zero, one, hard coded or you know 365 for number of days anything hard coded is going to be picked up by this okay so we're going to let it run and now as you can see all these red 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 cells are con contain some hard coding okay so let's go and check them out the first one is it seems to be okay so the only reason why it was detected is because it, there is a zero here it's okay you know i was the formula is saying that if the flag is one, do this, if not put zero. Okay. So if I put nothing, it's just gonna 
you know, it's not going to give us a, a red. Okay, the next one is this check. I put a check in the model so that if the sum of the percentages for the capex payment curve is not equal to one, give me a, a red flag. If not, put zero. So even this one, it was a problem. It detected this uh, one but it's, it's okay because I know that this is not a hard coded, it's just a check. So I wanna make sure that this is equal to one, okay? So that's not a problem. So the only problem I have is, which is in this tree, you know, these three red ones, they are really hard coded within formula. So that's a problem that was flagged here using this user defined function. And this one is just multiplied by minus one to get a negative uh, figure, negative values of the same, the cost reflected in, uh, in, in negative values. It's a convention that I use in my financial statements. So as you can see here with this method, with the user defined function combined with uh, with conditional formatting, we could easily you know, create something that can help us during the review to detect hard-coded formulas. Okay, so I think that's it for me. I'm gonna put the blog post up as well on my website and uh, all the other links that I mentioned. I hope you liked this short video and uh, hope to see you in my next video. Thank you and bye. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.